We put out a call for all Victorians to come out and share their stories about homelessness as housed and unhoused. So we built a speaker's corner booth to provide a space for folks that was fun and private. Myself and others went to the streets and door to door. The community responded with their presence and stories. What do you think um, that events like this can do for the community? Well, for one of the things it can do is that it'll get the voices of the homeless heard about the very problems that face them. And they'll be able to pay much more closer attention to the idea that the homeless people want homes built for them, not, not shelters. That's not the answer. We've invited the police, city councillors, people from Oak Bay, people from the neighbourhood, the stores, the Conservatory of Music, St. Andrews, everybody, please come. And basically this idea came up that, you know, we've had the town halls, we've had the panels, we've had all the information, so much, but what we haven't had is a whole lot of fellowship just hanging around, listening to music, eating food, like in the good old way, you know. And uh, we thought, well, let's do that, come together, and as you can see, people are coming together. As far as service providers, for sure, it's an opportunity to find out what everybody else is up to, um, to gather strength from the fact that other people are actually trying to do the same things that we're trying to do. Um, and as far as the community that live down here, um, I hope that what we're doing is beneficial to them in terms of raising awareness of the humanity of the issues that people are facing. It's not just an aesthetic issue for the city of Victoria, it's, it's an issue of human rights. So hopefully we're doing something helpful. So it's our first event where we're actually putting unity back in the word called community. Awesome. My name is Joseph Harris. I'm currently a resident of Beacon Hill Park and I'm aware and very comfortable that this video and audio record will be used by the Thaw Project. I think poverty um, coming from my own personal experience. Um, I used to be on the street um, prostituting. I used to do uh, whatever I could. I was a heroin addict. I lived for needles. I was homeless. I had, you know, and I think the one thing that really helped me um, was a woman who actually just showed some realness. I think we need realness on these streets. Uh, it's love. It's being real to people. It's showing true compassion, true um, honesty and true uh, just really being there for the person. Not if we're walking by these people and treating them, you know, being hopeless with them, then that's what they're going to think. I think poverty has more to do than actually being on the street and, and needing food. I think we need to reach into these people's lives and really care about them. And um, I think that's, that, I don't think, I know that's what happened to me. Somebody cared about me and I, and I acknowledged it. Build relationships and, and allow trust to come. I think we can't just do it once and be like, oh, hey, da, da, da. You know, we need to continuously build in these people's lives to say, this is what you can have. Hi, this is Bill Cody. I'm doing this for the uh, Association. One of the biggest problems I see, the average person on welfare doesn't pay for them to go to work. Take a single mother with two children who might be getting 12 to 1600 bucks a month to go to work for the minimum wage, which I think is eight bucks an hour, and have to put her kids in daycare, blah, 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 his pays her to stay home. I've been homeless for over 13 years now. Um, I've gotten many runs with the police. I've been hospitalized on many occasions. I recently was hospitalized in Vancouver because I was squeegeeing car windows. The police uh, beat me, they maced me, and removed my shoes and socks to mace my feet in the rain to the point where my skin was pretty much burnt off badly. Um, I don't know if the camera can see the scars, but uh, at the same time I have many other scars from police brutality. Um, they just pretty much like to single out and pick on homeless people. and. Um, I really think that it's not fair. I think that it's injustice. It's not justice. They're paid to keep the public and the society safe, but are not we a part of society? Aren't we part of the public? Just because of our financial situation doesn't make us any different than anybody else.
we're we're walking, breathing, living human beings, just like the other person walking down the street. Like people are free to say what they want, do what they want, live the way they want. I personally, I made the choice to be homeless. I like to travel. I ride trains. So don't don't consider that a crime. Just because I want to be free, it's not a crime. Because of the closures of certain areas where people are allowed to shower, they're allowed to eat, safe injection sites, which reduce harm in the, in the streets, that nobody's shooting up in alleys in front of children or people anymore. Your drug addiction is your addiction. Keep it to yourself. But safe, safe injection sites like Insight in Vancouver, these take the eyes of the public off of other people's problems, if you know what I'm saying. It's a solution. Instead of taking away things like that, or taking away places where people can camp out and have a safe place where they feel like they're at home, instead of taking that away and drawing them out into new spots and sweeping them under the carpet, so to speak, why don't you just help out? I personally don't go to shelters because you have to be by a certain time. You can't bring this in, you can't bring that in, all this stuff. Like, before you get on your pedestal or your mighty throne, um, just think about what you're taking away from us, and then think if you want us living next door to you. And personally, I really like sleeping here. It's a safe place, and the lights go up pretty early, so. I'd like to say that I've been in this city for about a year now. And when I first came to the city, I was unemployed and I came on my own and to start a new life. Uh, I'm educated. I have two degrees. I ended up homeless uh, for, for a month. I stayed actually in Sandy Merriman House and, uh, because I could not find employment and I ran out of resources. So I quickly learned that this city certainly supplies the resources. Uh, however, um, I felt that I experienced being caught in the system and uh, realized that I was being treated um, without dignity very quickly because of my status. And I have been pretty privileged up until this time in my experience as a white, uh, educated uh, woman. Um, but simply because of the class, the economic class that I was put in, experienced while being here, uh, I realized that I was being treated differently. In my experience of looking for housing, uh, the first question that's asked of me is if I'm working or not. Uh, so that has given me great struggle. Luckily I found housing. Um, on the mainland, I'm continuing my education, I'm continuing my career, I'm going to be volunteering with Amnesty International. I'm not giving up this fight. And um, I want to, I believe, you know, with more voices and collecti collectivity, we can we can change things. And state control, police control, is is outrageous. The number of you know jailings that have happened, you know, people that are getting set up by police, the Aboriginal people. Uh, we know, you know, they, you know, our home on native land, <laughs> you know, um, and you know, people need to wake up and they need to get educated and uh, you know realize that you are really one paycheck away from the street. There's a murder in the air bin morning all the ghetto birds are squawking and are cawing. It's before the sun has even risen. Behind all the rain that is falling. Homeless junkies are hanging in my alley. They're trading drugs and the birds are watching It's raining on a main and Hastings zone 